Hello, I'm Nicola Anthony. I'm an artist and I work in Singapore and London. I'm really fascinated by messages and writing and text and gathering those messages from people and putting them into my artworks. For this particular project, one of the key aims was to really highlight the, the aspirations of people. So it's about wishes, it's about what we aspire to. It was really a wonderful opportunity to work with about 5,000 or more people to gather all those human voices together into one really exciting project. An Ouroboros is, is this circular shape that is like a circle that eats its own tail. So it's going round and round and it's like an infinite cycle. It's an ancient symbol which is found in quite a lot of um, very diverse cultures and so it's a symbol that seems quite human and it's just naturally developed um, through time. For me it's quite a poetic symbol and for this particular project, because it's to do with the Southeast Asian Games, the symbol of Ouroboros just seems very positive. It's about progress. And if you're thinking in a sports capacity, of course you do. You repeat your actions and you practice and you practice and you become better. And that's also the same for an artist. We're constantly practicing. So it is this repetition cycle and uh, growing and improving and reaching for those extraordinary things. The lovely thing about Ouroboros was that um, from the very beginning it was about being a team and that comes from the sports side as well um, and so I wanted to bring that concept across into the artwork. I worked with a very large community of people who actually added their voices, their aspirations to it. So that was more than 5,000 children um, from local schools and also then that branched out into their teachers, their families. Um, so I actually had some teachers asking me afterwards, oh, could you bring some more ping pong so we can fill it in as well? And some took it home for their for extended family. And um, so in that respect, we had a community. And then we also worked with, because it's such a big sculpture, we then thought, well, we could actually bring people in to work on stringing together the ping pong balls. So we had lots of studio volunteers and studio elves, as we started calling them, um, who came together to help put together all those aspirations, um, which had a really nice feel to it and uh, brought more people to be part of this journey. And then I've also got my close team who I work with who've been with me right till the end, actually helping to construct and bring together the final sculpture. The sculpture, because it was my first big public light sculpture, had a lot of new elements, so of course it brings challenges and new things that I had to learn. So, for example, working with uh, electrical wiring and light bulbs that have to be weatherproof. And of course in Singapore the weather is very tropical, so it's humid even when it's not rainy, and it rains uh, very heavily when it does. So. Um, mixing that with electricity is an interesting challenge for the artist. Um, of course the scale, this is probably the biggest sculpture that I've ever made, so I had to bring it outside of my studio, find a new space with a really high ceiling in order to do this. And of course the kind of logistical and organisational side of getting 5,000 people involved. Um, but for that I was very lucky that IQ Kids, who were my community partner, actually helped organise that whole thing and uh, facilitated the, the entire process with the schools and getting the ping pong balls and 2,000 pens across the whole of Singapore. So that was a, a, a great collaboration with them. The messages on the ping pongs were actually a very big part of the process for me and for the whole team because we were constantly stringing them so reading all these lovely aspirations and messages throughout. Some were very beautiful and insightful and hopeful and others were um, very much about society and wishing good things for society which is really important because this is the 50th anniversary of Singapore as a nation this year so of course there's lots of celebration community spirit and it was nice to see that coming through in the artwork so there were some really wonderful wishes and some very personal very insightful into that individual which is really why I wanted to, to kind of understand people a bit more through this artwork and some were a bit more looking globally thinking about the world about society so there was really everything on the scale 
And we also had some messages which were, you know, people who perhaps were in a bit of a difficult place or a sad place in their life who have wishes to improve that or to get out of that situation, which is quite sad and touching, um, but also very positive that they have put this as their aspiration and that hopefully through maybe putting it in the artwork it helps them to cement that wish and actually reach for it a bit more. And um, for me it was really touching that people were genuinely honest and gave us that insight into themselves. The whole project has been like this, like a journey, because we've really been progressing from one stage to the other. And along that, you know, it's been quite intense and uh, it's been very amazing to meet all these different children and to read all these different aspirations. So it's been quite, uh, you know, influential for me. And I think the, the most important thing is that it's really been about community artwork and about collaboration and that's the message behind the artwork, all these individual wishes and aspirations coming together to create a whole thing, so like a sum of parts, but um, it's also really been part of the process that there's been so many people involved, so many people have become the subject of the artwork and even that we had some really kind strangers who got involved. Um, neighbours to the studio space came and brought cups of coffee when I was working really late and came over with coffee and um, food for, for me and my team and even to the point where installing on site one day we were just hooking up the electrics and suddenly a lady ran up with a packet of ping pong balls and she said I've got these I just got them today from a scavenger hunt would you like them? And so she donated these extra five ping pong balls. So in fact, it's now 10,005 ping pong balls in the sculpture. Um, but the fact that it's kind of prompted people to get involved and become part of this thing, I think that is great that the sculpture has somehow got this gravity that it's pulled lots of people into the process. And um, that's been a really wonderful thing.